Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a nice cup of green tea. So with a new patch comes some new changes and additions and normally that wouldn't warrant its own video certainly nor really any great mention however I believe the changes and additions that have come along with version 1.0.18 are worthy of note because they are going to allow us more options for building in the future and inform those builds but also give us options for retrofitting some older designs that will improve them hopefully. <laughs> now I want to go through some of the additions and changes. It's not going to be an exhaustive list for that. By all means check the link out in the description for the patch notes. However I want to go through some of the changes and additions, what it may mean for future builds and allow us to make and also we'll go ahead and try some of these new things out. Maybe in old designs, maybe in a new one, but we'll see how we get on. Either way over to design and fight and we'll check out some of the new stuff first. So over to Command and Crew, we can see we have a couple of new things here. We have a Command Center and we have an Observation Dome. So the Command Center is fairly interesting. If we zoom in, I'll actually move that up so it's uh, split up there. We have the Command Center. It requires some you know, some different tech and stuff, but we're not really worrying about that for these skirmish fights. It is a massive Command Center suitable for leading fleet operations. It's a two-story building which has battle maps and readouts and a nice sort of flying uh, front bridge here with the wheel. And, oh, it doesn't have an engine or a telegraph. That's a yeah, 2 out of 10. Unplayable. Mr. Trick. Uh, either way, this thing is pretty good because it increases the command of all ships by 30%. So it has a global ability. So if you have this on the table, all ships increase their command by 30%. Now, in previous um, workshop mods, I think we've seen the, this sort of thing. But I think this is the first time... It's either the first time we've had a global a global ability, or it's certainly a, a limited thing, but that's pretty good. Now, naturally, it doesn't matter how good something is, if it's too expensive, then, you know, it's it might not be worth it. But we'll have to see how things fare out in battle. So that's pretty good immediately from the get-go. We'll remove that and check out this other one here, which is an observation dome. So an alien saucer-looking thing, and it's got this big glass dome there. A reinforced observation dome to keep track of the battle. Well, until a cannon shot goes straight through and takes out the crew. It has, as its main bonus, increases weapon accuracy by 15%, which also stacks with a walled deck telescope, targeting computer, and a standard telescope. The reason it says those twice is because there's now different options for things like the telescope. So there's the standard telescope, and there is the uh, walled deck telescope. So you can make like a outside part of it which I think is fairly cool as well. So there's just some of the things in the command and crew. I don't think there's anything in lift. I don't think there's anything in propulsion. I don't think there's anything in resources although there might be some visual changes in here but I don't know uh, and maybe some slight statistical changes but not any big additions. Let's go over to here we now have an aerial torpedo external which can be flipped to the top as well. So the aerial torpedo external, a single externally mounted aerial aerial torpedo cannot be resupplied during combat. So you can fire this once and then that's it. It's a fire and forget, uh, fire it once type weapon. However, it costs 50 as opposed to 208. So that gives us options for new buildings where we can create, say, a huge or relatively huge vessel at fairly um, low cost. And I think some of the ones on the bottom are wrong there but there you go we can make like a wedge there and that's only 400 connected up with some basic stuff and we can fire these and then just ram into something and that will probably cause more damage than this thing is worth so really really cool we also have a similar thing later on but we're going to keep going down sequentially there we have a turret here front turret which obviously can go to the bottom but the main takeaway is that that was the previous version we now have a variant of a domed version and also a square version which I'm not too keen on but it is what it is it will probably allow us to place things where we need them and it's more of an aesthetic touch isn't it we also have if we go down here a guided missile which your eye was probably drawn to from the beginning but let's just touch on it now so a guided missile a sophisticated guided missile able to reach far away targets but not close ones so blast damage 90 uh, let's compare that with like say a torpedo actually so We've got blast damage of 90 as opposed to uh, 160, splash damage 8 meters as opposed to 7, reload time 25 seconds as opposed to the uh, 12 seconds for that one. But the fire arc is 360 degrees, however a downside, minimum range 214 meters. I mean that is... <laughs> Well, 
it's that. So, something gets in close, this has got absolutely no chance. Maximum accurate range, 6,600 metres, as opposed to the aerial torpedo of 1,600. So, it's certainly a sit -a back and siege -a target type of weapon. However, you could also put it on a static structure and obviously fire back. Main problem... It's 1,124 generic units of currency, so it is very, very expensive. So if you wanted to make, and I'm sure you probably do, a submarine with loads of these down the spine of it, down the back, well, there's eight of them and it's nearly ten grand, so <laughs> it's not exactly, um, it's not exactly a cheap thing to make, but... I'm hoping that something like this will allow us to sit back and siege very, very effectively. It also requires a lot. Four crew members, and I think it takes a lot to reload the thing. Flammable and may explode. So, yeah, interesting to try out, but also I can imagine there being a lot of problems with that. We now have, a, on a different sort of other side of the coin, really, a kinetic bomb. We have, an easiest way to hurt your enemies from an airship is to simply drop heavy things on them. Cannot resupply during combat. It is just piercing damage 120. That's it. It's just a bomb that drops and there you go. Bang. I think this may split up into multiple sections or that might be a different thing in here. But either way, it's very cheap. 15. So once again, you can imagine that maybe a long ship is long. And yeah, that's only that's only 500. It gives us options for for more things. Also, because of the cheapness of that and the torpedo, we can, we can have them as like secondary weapons. Oh, we need something on there. Let's just clamp a couple of these on. You get the idea, hopefully. We also have a massive rocket external, which for some reason can't be flipped on the top. I don't know why that is. It can only be mounted on the bottom there, but as you can see, it is now in, so you can place these on there. Similar to the other stuff, it cannot be resupplied during combat, but then again, it's only 60. So, pretty cheap. So, pretty cool. Also, standard rocket as well. Like I said, I don't know why they can't be flipped at the top. I would have thought that would have been a nice addition, but there you are. It is what it is. Uh, Gatling gun, same thing for the grip shot and imperial cannon. Can all be changed so it can be outside. Oh, look at that. See the that's a grip shot cannon. You can see big shotgun shells almost at the back there. Uh, cannon, yeah, you've got the standard cannon and the closed one in. So yeah, you've got different visual things, which if nothing else gives us options, and options are always good. Um, unless both options are terrible, you understand. And I think that is pretty much it for the... I think that's pretty much it for the weapons. There might be one I've missed out, but either way, that is not what I'm actually excited for. Even though a lot of those are cool, the things I'm really excited for are in aircraft. We have an aircraft command deck, an aircraft maintenance bay, and a biplane hook. So, from top to bottom, we have... An aircraft command deck, a specialised command centre for coordinating aircraft operations, can give detailed commands to aircraft. This is something I've been wanting, I'm going to say for years, I don't know if it is years plural or year, over a year, well, it's been a long time, put it that way. I have gone on and quite frankly mourned about how annoying it is for airplanes to immediately launch and get shot down and this changes all of that now again it's expensive so whether or not this is cost effective i don't know yet but giving us the options to launch and having those advanced features which i will show you in a moment is certainly a good thing just having the option is great we also have an aircraft maintenance bay which seems to have some sort of jet engine in there uh, a large ma uh, machine shop specializing in repairing and rearming aircraft aircraft are repaired 100 percent faster and aircraft are rearmed 25 percent faster so if you have a carrier then this thing is certainly something you want aircraft command deck 314 aircraft maintenance bay 524. Oh, I should also point out that the command deck aircraft launch 200% faster, so it's go, 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 get them off the deck. And we also have a biplane hook, which I think was something you could get in mods, but not being in the game as default. So you can see a biplane attached to the underside of the ship, and yes, you can actually stack them, so you can go that and put them, like, you know, forward of another one another, so that is fine. So yes, if you really wanted to, you could go one there, one there, one there, and then if you really wanted to, you can do that, and that, and that. Now, I don't know why you would want to do that. Um, it looks fairly flimsy. It looks like it would snap if one bit of water dropped on the front if it started to rain, but we've got... Uh, two, four, six, seven aircraft at just over 2,000, so pretty cool. Anyway, that is those additions there, but that's the one certainly I'm most excited for. Obviously, all different changes as well. I'm not going to run down those, but I don't think there's anything else major in any of these decorations or anything like that. But let's leave that 
And we're going to go over to combat and to a day fight. And I'm going to add an airship. And we're going to go down to the New York. And the reason for that is the New York is primarily a carrier. That's what it was really built to do. Come in. It's got one, two, three, four four triplanes on the top and two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen hazard bays it has got not very good armor if we've got outside view that's actually uh, i think that's steel wall i don't know actually um hang on i might be able to find out it is uh uh, no, I think it's steel anyway, so that's uh, that's the, the takeaway from this. So it's all right, and also it's got two very accurate suspendium cannons, big rail guns on the front. Now, previously, what would happen is this 5,000 plus point ship would go, hey, I've brought loads of aircraft with me, and immediately launch them at a target, and that target would shoot them all down because we hadn't had the time to destroy all of the weapons. For example, if we go to add building and add... I'm going to say the Land Fortress, but this would still win because of the sheer amount of guns. But even if we put, say, the a couple of white lookouts, let's place a couple of these. Um, going over to the right-hand side here, we're going to place one there and one there. Now we have flak on the top, which is four flak. That alone will take out pretty much everything that we had. But now I'm going to go over to the left, make sure we select this, start the fight, pause it. You might notice we've got this little section here now this gives us options for the aircraft if we just press space you can see they are launching they're already launching but i've already retrofitted this this is where we've got the aircraft the aircraft command deck it gives us options for the aircraft we have options for land all aircraft aircraft uh, normal operation aircraft guard mothership which is cool aircraft only intercept enemy aircraft that's very useful and aircraft only attack enemy ships and buildings so they've already launched now i don't want to send them now because they're going to go to their death i'm going to say land immediately he says no oh, there we go after a little bit of delay the comms are a bit fuzzy they've now landed even the hazards i'm going to ground the ship actually move it back to there far back as possible Oh, bit of fire there. Might want to put that out. <laughs> there we go. And you see the suspendium cannons are firing. And we'll land the ship. So, we're not wasting any coal. And what we're doing is shooting them from long range. Now, they probably have the advantage anyway because they have just a lot more guns. But already, we've taken out a flak cannon. And started to do damage. So, on a vessel that maybe not is this one. Like I say, this is not a great example of what this really means but we are doing damage to them and yes we are receiving damage back if we go to outside view we will be able to see that and also probably see another fire because i think i can hear one burning but we are taking damage but none of our aircraft are destroyed so we can wait a little while for their defenses to be worn down and then once that's happened once a lot of that has been taken out we then send in the aircraft so instead of every aircraft charging forward and getting immediately destroyed we can siege it a bit and then launch the aircraft which i think gives us a lot more options and as i said it's something i've been wanting for quite some time maybe not for this ship because i don't think this is designed i don't think it's got enough armor nor is armed enough because uh, it is primarily a carrier but if we say launch now we're already going to be suffering one less flat cannon and I would hope for a little bit more, but here comes the aircraft in, and there you go. Uh, they are getting shot down because they're going past these rifles, but obviously we will be able to hopefully get back and repair. If this was... <laughs> yeah, they're already gone. If this was, for example, a full retrofit, this was just for testing purposes, we would put in the... Um, we would put in the aircraft repair module and stuff. And there you go, we're actually starting to swarm them now. If we had sent these out earlier, we might have suffered a lot more damage. Let's go over, and we'll leave that for now, and go back to combat, and back to the day there. Go to, actually no, back to, where would it be? Airship editor, open the design, go past the New York, because there's, I think, some better examples of this in, where is it? It would be around here somewhere and that's just the york uh, maybe from the top athens no uh, athens for example that's a um it's got just planes and that's just a carrier so the aircraft command deck and telling them to stay wouldn't necessarily work to our favor 
However, there is a couple of designs somewhere that would. Certainly the Excalibur we would want to overhaul with the Aircraft Command Deck, the repair stuff, and indeed the Command Center. Um, the Harrier, similar thing, we would want to change that and just wait until everything has been destroyed because that's actually got a lot more guns on it. But I think one of the changes actually would be in the Landship Editor. Open the design here. Acne Carry. Not that one. Uh, some of these obviously are just all daft ones. That's something that I do want to come back to. The uh, Yeah, that thing there that we made previously. That's unfinished business with that one. Um, but we do have a fairly decent carrier here somewhere. I mean, that one you wouldn't bother with, would you? Um, in fact, now that I'm going through, there we go. Something like that. Um, that is the Paris where we've got some guns on the front, but not a lot of, but not a lot of them. Um... That's because we were focusing on the aircraft. What I'd probably do then is things like that, which is the top, uh, yeah, torpedo tank. Um, that one there, we would load that up quite cheap because this is just aerial torpedo launching planes. And I'd just put more weapons on it and wait for those weapons to take out the defences and then we would send these in. Oh, I think that might have cut out there. As I was saying, um, yes, it gives us more options for building more heavily armoured carriers which will siege more and then send in the aircraft, which is really cool. And also we can, let's say, open some of the previous designs, certainly some of the legacy legacy designs and go that way. So what I want to do now is, well, we're going to have to do it, aren't we? Let's go down and probably get something like that, the hull, and we want to rip all of these weapons off because... Yeah, I mean, there's loads of weapons that we could try, but quite frankly, we want to try the guided missile, don't we? So there's three guided missiles on the front there. Um, it's currently named the Hull, although uh, we're going <laughs> to... We should probably call it the Trident or something similar. Um, let's just call it... Um, actually, Test Hull version 1. Test... It is... A, it's not the, uh, you know... It's not named after a town or city, it's just, it is a test hull. And we've got three guided missiles. Yeah, it's a lot more expensive. Um, save design, test hull one. And let's see if this can do anything. In combat, add in a airship down to the bottom. Test hull one. As you might imagine, we don't care about service ceiling and we don't care about getting up close. It's going to be at the back as much as I can. 4,000 we will add in a building. And what we'll do is we'll massively underpoint it. Let's go for a... Probably just the... Probably just a white lookout. And place one of them. And naturally they are much, much, much cheaper than us. But I want to see what these things do. Actually what I might do is move that further up a little bit. Because we can. So, start... There it is. The top opens up. <laughs> and there goes the missile. Right. It does actually <laughs> launch it like that. And oh, I don't know if you saw that, but when it was built when they're building it, it actually builds it sequentially. So like the building like the hull goes on there. Yeah, there you go. So the, the frame goes on there, then they've got like the different stages in there and propellants and such, and then the warhead, and then they put the cladding around the outside. So can we see? Oh yeah, there we go. We've got one missile which is coming in and I'm guessing this is suspendium tipped, perhaps. Uh, suspendium being the good grief, the resource that makes everything work. And that's a, that's a big hit. Okay, pause that at the right time. Let's unpause it and right. So it does hit and I wonder if it can be taken out by flak. Hmm, not by the flak on the top of that because it's now been destroyed. So that's cool. I'm guessing... I'm guessing rapid fire is the order of the day. I'm assuming this thing can miss, but we'll see. Ammo, already we're under half. <laughs> Good grief. So already we've we've halved that. I wonder how long... Oh, hang on, there's another one coming. We can see the speed of that. Oh, I love the arc. I love the arc it takes when it goes up. Here it comes. It loves targeting the back. And that actually did miss there. Okay. I'm wondering if those missiles can be shot down by aircraft and flak. I'm going to assume they can be, but perhaps wrongly. It would be curious if they weren't able to be shot down. Although, then again, would it mean that just grape shot cannons would take them all out? Is it just acting similar to, similar to the aerial torpedo? Hmm. Anyway. 
at this stage it matters not. Oh, it's going to be a double barrel hit. Wow. Now, naturally, this isn't a fair fight. And even then, even though we've taken out a huge chunk of this land stuff, which, admittedly, they're always, for the most part, better than anything else that can fly or fight because, well, they don't have to have any motive systems, so they're immediately cheaper. But there you go. We're out of... <laughs> We're out of ammo. We've been able to do, what, three volleys, three volleys, I think? And we're totally out of ammo. Right, okay. Um, that's been a little try, that one. Is there anything else we can try? Let's go over to Airship Editor, open the design, and we'll go for Test Hole 1. We're going to remove all of these, and... I mean, we could put more guided missiles on, but is there any point? Not really. Let's try... Should we try the Kinetic Bomb? There we go. Rename... Rename as Test Hole 2. Save. And this is a lot cheaper at 903. Save the design. No, hang on. Save the design. Yep. And let's try that one out. Now, the <laughs> I'm hoping that the, uh, the, ser the service ceiling will be quite uh, higher. Let's go ahead and go for the Test Hole 2. Server ceiling, 72 meters. Still poor. Okay. What I'll do then is I'll add a land ship. What we are what we were up against. 903. Okay. Actually, I think I've got a building around about that price. Mm, 930. Okay. It's a melee. Oh, sorry. This one this is the weird designs that we <laughs> were trying where it actually flies because it's yeah. It just does, just accept that it flies. Um, that's a flying fortress as well. It's got the turtle armor on it, which makes it fly. Let's just put a dark cube, just a version 2 on there. And start the fight, immediately move to there. Now, as I said, this is going to be a, a once, a basically a once in a, in a lifetime drop. And you can also say, activate single-use weapons. So it's not going to use them, actually, until we press the button. And there we go. <laughs> um... That was a thing, right? And maybe move forward a little bit, and... Right. So, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it <laughs> it's certainly um, done a bit. Hmm. Yeah, I, th there's our certainly second weapons. Unless you completely stack a ship, which is... Well, yeah, right across, but I can't imagine that being um, massively effective. Okay, so that's been a little bit of an attempt with that one. Let's go for one more, then. Open the design with test hole 2 and I want to remove all of those and what do we want to put on it we've tried kinetic bomb we've tried we have put rockets external I mean rockets external because we can't stack them we'd have to do that and again because I do see these as like not really prime weapons not necessarily anywhere maybe that'll change once we've played with them some more but it'll give us just more options for putting a couple of secondaries on there. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to start clamping these on it because we know what the aerial torpedoes do. It's just a one-shot version of it. But yeah, there we go. That's some of those. What actually comes to mind immediately is although these are external and cannot be resupplied during combat, what if there was ever a module that allows you to refill these on the field? Obviously, it would be expensive, and it would be a it would be a support module, but it would be something along the lines of if you had it on this ship, if something that needed to be rearmed got within a certain distance, it would sort of umbilical up to it and rearm them. I can't. I don't think that is within the scope of what's trying to be achieved here, and I'm just sort of you know thrown ideas around. Don't know whether it work or not, but it will be quite interesting. We've seen a lot of the expansion-y stuff with some of the DLC before. But anyway, that has been a little look at this recent edition. As I said, the main takeaway for me is the maintenance bay, yes, the plane hook, yes, the command deck, certainly. Having things like, I mean, I know it's over the top, but the Excalibur. Retrofitting this to have all of the new stuff will make it more expensive because, of course, it will. But... Also, hopefully, allow us to sit back, siege, and then launch this stuff. Because at the moment, if we, for example, move all of these. Let's do that. Remove all of these. Right across. There we go. It was about 16,000. 
Removing all of the aircraft takes it down to just over 12. Wow. So, like a third to a quarter of its points are, I wouldn't say wasted, but are used up on aircraft that traditionally we would start the fight, they would launch, and then would be dead within the first, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. Whereas now we can hold them back and we can also repair them. And we have all the weapons to do the sieging. But this is a over the top example. Either way, hope you have enjoyed this little look and mess around with airships, Conquer the Skies, and also with the version 1.0.18 out now. And hopefully it should allow us to make some new stuff. If you have any suggestions for designs in the future, by all means let me know. Naturally, we will be doing a a guided missile defense platform and also because we, we need to make a bunker it, it just has to be done um and we also want to make a sieging vessel as well which will have to have a lot of armor and a lot uh, and i do mean a lot of ammo um those yep immediately we're going to try those obviously we'll try out some new things uh, by all means let me know what you think we should make and change and also what you think would benefit from retrofitting and just general ideas and comments and suggestions etc either way hope you have enjoyed it thanks very much for watching take care and generic partings